Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane. And before we get into the video, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who's taken the time to watch, comment, and like the videos. And a special thank you to those who subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate it. For those of you who may be stopping by for the first time, on this channel, we focus on dividend growth investing. It's not rocket science, in my opinion. The best way to do anything, keep it as simple as possible. So for me, it really boils down to consistently investing dollar cost average into dividend growth stocks and growing companies with positive cash flow that covers the dividend and with a high return on their invested capital. I utilize uh, both a dollar cost average approach, consistently investing every week, and that's what this portfolio is. We will take a look at the $1,538 that we added. So again, I do the portfolio updates every Sunday morning, but I also do larger purchases. If I get a bonus, typically once a year, I get a nice bonus. I dump that in the portfolio, or if I do a side job or run into any additional funds, uh, I cover all my best investments into the portfolio on this channel. I do not have a paid Patreon account. I don't intend to ever have one. We all have enough to pay for. So it's free to see what I'm doing in the portfolio. But if you would like to help me out, if you could take a moment to hit that thumbs up button down below, if you find any value in the content, if you're a dividend growth investor or an investor in general, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community. Hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever we put out any new content. I do these portfolio updates again every Sunday morning. I also do a stock pick of the day series Monday through Thursday. Then I do a couple other monthly updates. I'll cover the options and dividends paid out for the month, as well as what stocks I'm looking to buy as we roll into another month. Uh, if you haven't taken a look at my uh, four stocks to buy in June, go ahead and take a look at that one. And I just did one yesterday. Uh, you'll be seeing this on Sunday morning. So Saturday, I put out the uh, dividends and options uh, total for the month of May. So really appreciate everyone who's taking the time to do that. And a special thank you to the subscribers out there. Over 930 subscribers now, getting very close to 1,000 subscribers. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, hit that subscribe button down below. I know there's some of you out there who are watching the channel who haven't taken the time to hit the subscribe button and notification bell. Help me out. Help me get to 1,000 subscribers. Really do appreciate it. And it does really help to spread the videos a little further and get the word out. So options, we did have better luck in the options this week, I will say. We have not been doing great in the options over the uh, first part of the year here, but this week was pretty good. So we'll start here on the third, and we did do one contract for CVS. One contract equals 100 shares, so you have to have at least 100 shares. And I do a sold the open, so I sell covered calls, and then if I get funds, I'll do what they call cash secure put. But I'm always selling options. I'm not buying options. So one contract to CVS with an expiration date of June 21st, right? And I usually don't go out this far. I usually stay a week, uh, maybe two. Some positions make you go out further. CVS will do weekly calls. So typically I do one week. I have not done one out this far, so I wanted to see how this worked. Uh, and to be honest with you, this one is in danger of maybe getting called away. CVS had a pretty good week. They re rebounded a little bit here. They've been down in the 50s. They're back in the 60s now. So this one actually is in danger of getting called away. And it has a $63 strike price. And the downside to covered calls is I will only get $63. Let's say this runs up to $63.50 or $64 or $65. I would be capped at $63. I would not get anything over that. But I would, like I said, take the cash and probably do a cash secured put and then run what they call the wheel on it. Now, this is well below my cost basis. My cost basis is still at like $67 and some change. So that's why I was willing to go out to the 21st at 63. I really thought it would stay in the high 50s, uh, maybe touch the 60s there by the 21st, but it really rebounded here this week. We'll see what happens. Uh, it hasn't been called away yet, but it is in danger since we've got two weeks left. So we received $30.45 there. Now the other two I entered into on the 4th, and these did expire on the 7th. So we had one sold the open, same thing, covered call on Johnson & Johnson. Uh, ticker J and J out of the healthcare sector with a $150 strike price. Now the the share price of Johnson and Johnson did not go above $150, so we just keep this $35.45 and we keep those 100 shares. Same thing with Cisco. Ticker CSCO out of the information technology sector. One contract uh, sold to open a covered call. Expiration date was June 7th, which was Friday. $47.50 strike price. It did not go over that, so we took the $25.45 plus the 35.45, plus the 30.45, $91.35 in total. And this is part of that $1,500 that I added to the portfolio this week. So when I do these options, that's what I'm doing it for. It's a way to 
add a little bit of uh, capital into the portfolio to help build this portfolio a little faster. We'll see what happens over the next two weeks with CVS. Again, maybe this one does get covered, uh, this covered call that gets called away. Hopefully it doesn't run up past 63 too much. To be honest with you, hopefully it stays under 63 uh, so that I keep the shares and I just keep the premium and then maybe I won't do one out as far. Uh, but we'll see. I want to I wanna see what's going on with the covered calls whenever we go out that a little further. I probably should have got a little better premium on it, but that's all right. Uh, $91.35 in total, a little better week in the options compared to uh, what we've been in the, the last several weeks since last several months. We also had a we also had a pretty good uh, week in dividends on June 3rd. We also received dividends from Kroger ticker KR and American Waterworks ticker AWK. Uh, Kroger paid us out eight, and Kroger is out of the consumer staple sector. American Waterworks is a utility company out of the utility sector. Uh, Kroger paid us out $29.17, and we do have the drip set. And drip just means dividend reinvestment plan. So when you have the drip set in your portfolio, if they offer that. I believe most brokerages do now. It just means that it automatically, when a company pays out dividends, they automatically go back in and buy more shares of that company. So Kroger paid out $29.17 and $29.17 went back in and picked up 0.56002 shares. And same thing with American Waterworks, paid us $78.03. That $78.03 went right back in and picked up 0.59448 more shares. And these new shares added $2.46 in capital over the next calendar year. And what you're seeing here is what they call the dividend snowball in effect, right? I've already added capital into the portfolio and bought shares of Kroger and American Waterworks. Kroger and American Waterworks pay out dividends, right? $107.20. Those shares, because of the drip, drip, dividend reinvestment plan, go right back in and pick up more shares of the same company those shares add additional income. So that is that dividend snowball in effect. And think of the dividend snowball uh, as starting at the top of a hill. For those of you, maybe I grew up in, in Michigan, so we have winters and, you know, it's like building a snowman. You start at the top of the hill. By the time you get to the bottom of the hill, it's the big part of the snowman. Then you do one a little bit uh, smaller. You don't roll it down all the way and that becomes part of the body. And then you, you roll the third one, not down uh, very far, and that becomes the head. But the hill is time. Right. So that's the other part of the dividend snowball time and time is going to pass regardless. So little incremental investments over time will build on themselves just like a snowball rolling down a hill and eventually become a very, very big snowball or a very, very big portfolio. Right. That's the uh, that's the comparison and why some people talk about that dividend snowball. And we received dividends also on June 4th, $266.57. So all total between the two days on the 3rd and the 4th, of, you know, not quite $400 in dividends, but very, very good start to uh, the month of June here. Now, I'm going to talk through Enbridge here. It looks like there's a lot going on, but let's talk through it here. So we'll start at the bottom. Enbridge, ticker EMB, paid us out dividends. Enbridge is out of the energy sector. They paid us $146.89. This is a Canadian company, so there are tax implications around uh, foreign companies like this. My brokerage, and I use Ally Bank, they take the taxes out right away for me. So this $22.03 right here, that is actually the taxes paid out of this $146.89. So the dividend, even though we were paid $146.89, we removed the taxes, so we really reinvest $124.86. Same thing, it's still the drip still applies though. Even though they took out taxes, the drip goes takes the remaining funds, the $124.86, and buys more shares of Enbridge. In this case, we picked up 3.4742 more shares. And on the fourth, we also received Johnson & Johnson's dividends, ticker J&J. &J. So not only did we... Uh, run a, a covered call on Johnson & Johnson, but we received some dividends from Johnson & Johnson as well. We received $141.71. Again, those funds go right back in and pick up more shares, 0.96285 shares. Not quite a share, but getting pretty close uh, to getting one share every time Johnson & Johnson pays out. This is one I may add to, especially if it stays down in the 140 range here. Uh, I might nibble on this one a little bit, even though it is my largest position. Now, these new shares of Enbridge and the new shares of Johnson & well, but fractions of a share of Johnson & Johnson adds an additional $14.12 over the next calendar year. Now, finally, we get into the first cap, new capital added to the portfolio. We went in June 4th, whenever, same day we did some of the covered calls, 
and added $1,152.45. With those funds, we picked up two more shares of Realty Income, ticker O, the monthly paying REIT out of the real estate sector at $53.34. We picked up four more shares of Cisco Systems. So not only did we run a covered call on Cisco, but we added more shares to the position as well. It is pulled back. It is below my cost basis. I'm probably going to nibble here. Same thing with Realty Income a little bit. Uh, Realty Income was on my stocks to buy in June uh, video. So again, if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check that out. Four more shares of Cisco out of the information technology sector at $46.58. We continue to add to our Starbucks position, ticker SBUX, six more shares at $83.03, and CVS. So not only are we running uh, a covered call on this one uh, with a uh, strike price or a, a, a expiration date on the 21st, we are adding to this position as well. And I'm gonna continue to add. And as you can see here, uh, I picked this up at $60.22. Uh, again, it was in the 50s last week, so I'm hoping that it stays in the low 60s, below 63, or back down in the 50s so I don't get the, the position called away because this is one I'm continuing to build out. But if it does, we'll just run the wheel and do a cash secure put. Six more shares at $60.22. Again, added $1,152.45 on the 4th, and those new shares added $42.20 in additional income over the next calendar year. We weren't done. We went back in on June 7th. We added $385.72 more to the portfolio. We picked up four more shares of Valet, uh, ticker VAL. This is a mining company out of the material sector. I was liking this in the $12 range. It has dropped back into the $11 range. So we're going to continue to nibble and we've been nibbling on this, you know, two, three, four shares uh, this week. We Last week, I think it was two. The week before, I think it was one. We're going to continue to add little bits of this. Really, this is like if I have a little bit left, I think I had like $50 left. So I said, oh, I'll pick up two more here. And that's kind of how I'm going to do it uh, going forward here. But I'd like to build this one out a little bit while it's in the $11, $12 range. Four more shares, $11.44. And these next two are our weekly ETFs. We're going to buy these regardless of what the market is. I don't care. I'm going to buy one share, every at least one share a week. If the market overall was to pull back significantly, uh, VTI being the overall market, Vanguard total stock market, so that's all the, the companies in the United States stock, stock market, the New York Stock Exchange, ticker VTI, uh, and $262.26 was the price there. And same thing with SCHD, Schwab Strategic ETF here, Dividend Growth ETF, uh, ticker SCHD. We picked that up at $77.72. Now, if these were to pull back significantly, let's say the, the stock market had a nice crash or nice correction, a correction being 20% 20 20 or more, then I would look to add more than one share. But right now, I'm going to just add one share because I feel like the market overall is probably a little overpriced uh, or at the high end of the market anyway. Uh, but if it was to pull back significantly, we'd look to add more than one share and back off some of the other single positions. Now, these new shares, the two ETFs and the shares of LA, add an additional $14.78. All total invested $1,538.17. And with the dividends received and the new capital, I added $73.56 in additional income over the next calendar year. So pretty good week here. Now we will run through the sector weight update pretty quickly here. Communications sitting at 9.98% of the portfolio. Consumer staples makes up 6.36. I'm sorry, consumer discretionary, 6.36. Consumer staples makes up 9.61. Energy at 5.8. Financial sitting at 6.02%. Healthcare makes up 14.28. Industrials at 6.53. Technology sitting at 7.12%. Materials makes up 10.17% of the portfolio. Utilities sitting at 9.95 and REITs and real estate makes up 11.1%. ETF still the smallest slice here at 3.07, though it is starting to grow. Uh, I imagine by the end of the year, ETFs will probably overtake our consumer discretionary sector, if not uh, our energy sector as well, possibly our industrial sector also. Uh, I haven't really seen an opportunity to add to Union Pacific, uh, and I would like to add maybe one more position in the industrial sector. I've got my eyes on a couple. We'll see. Over here on the right, you can see the portfolio of sector weights, again, broken down by percentages, but also the capital allocated to each sector as well. Now, here's what it, 
a lot of you come week to week to check out to watch a, port, a real portfolio and that's what this is my overall portfolio and i'm going to be transparent and show you this real portfolio built out over time so that you can see the ups and downs of the market and the ups and downs inside a portfolio some week positions are up some week positions are down it changes from week to week it changes from month to month it changes from year to year that is the nature of the market it goes up and down it fluctuates you're going to have green days you're going to have red days you're going to have green positions you're going to have red positions if you don't like that then you should probably stick to etf investing right something like vti which is just the market or vu which is what warren buffett would recommend which is the s p 500 or another etf like that S spy i think is another s p 500 etf that is what warren buffett really recommends the s p 500 i like the overall market because then i get some of the small caps and mid caps that aren't necessarily in the S&P 500, the, the S&P 500 being the 500 largest companies in the United States. So it's a lot of large caps, right? Maybe some of the, the bigger mid caps, but it really doesn't have any of the small caps in it. So that's why I chose VTI, but VU would be a good one as well. Uh, and then you won't get quite fluctuations. You know, you won't see stuff like 30, you know, down MPW down 30% or CVS down 8%. There you see strike my pr price for CVS is $67.48. That's why I'm not real concerned if CVS was to go over $63. I mean, I'm willing to buy it up to 74. So if it goes over $63, I'll run the wheel on it. Uh, but anyways, in this column here, the tickers, all the positions in the portfolio, how many total shares I own, current price as of the close of business on Friday, market value as of the close of business on Friday, my average cost per share, how much I have in each position. So what we saw on the previous slide was how much I have in each sector. So this is each position. Total return, again, whether I'm up or down, I'm going to show you. In the red means I'm down. So you're, you're gonna have some that are down. You're gonna have some uh, that aren't winners, right? That's the nature of it. Even the best investors out there are gonna have positions that don't knock it out of the park, that might be losers. And you know if they remain losers over a long period of time, it might be at some point time to get out of them. Uh, none of these have hit that that point yet, but there are a couple that I'm watching Kraft Heinz being one of them It's down even more 6.06 percent. I've talked about this one uh, Several times I know uh, but this is what I'm seriously considering selling out of even if I was to take a little bit of a loss I'd like to not take a loss, but we'll see uh, Because they haven't been growing the dividend and I knew that when I bought them, you know, almost three years ago now uh so I knew that, but I was hoping that they would start growing their dividend again once they kind of got their uh, their stuff together. But but they haven't yet. So return here, percent return. So total return here, percent return here. Again, if I'm in the green, that means I'm up significantly. You can see here one of my best positions, Owens Corning, up 91.54%. Ally, another one, 50.35%. So you're going to have ups and downs. Some of them are going to really knock it out of the park. Some of them, not so much. Uh, what sector each company falls in, whether they're a quarterly, monthly, semi-annual payer, current dividend yield as of close of business on Friday, my yield on cost, the portfolio weighting. So what we saw on the previous slide was the sector weightings. And let me talk about that for a minute. I don't like, I have a rule in my portfolio and you set your own rules for your portfolio. But for my portfolio, I don't like any one position to be more than 10% of the portfolio. So that means if I was to get a position at 10%, I would either look to trim it back or I would just stop adding to it and add to different positions. And it really, that would depend on whether the company has really run up. Like let's say Owens Corning, you know, it was at 91.54%. I'm up 91.54% and it was over 10% of my portfolio. I might actually trim a little bit there uh, because then if it dropped back, I could, I could add some more. Or if it's a position like, uh, let's say Lion do Basil, that was, or even Johnson & Johnson. Uh, here, Johnson & Johnson, which is 6.57% of my portfolio, and I was down, I, I definitely wouldn't trim the position, right? I would just add to other, other spots. So it's really a case-by-case -case basis, but I do have a rule. I don't like any one position to be over 10%, and I don't like any one sector to be over 25%. Estimated annual income in this or I'm sorry, portfolio weighting in this column, estimated annual income in this column, what months they pay out and the dividend growth year over year. And you'll see some of these are zeros. When I bought Ally, they were still growing their dividend. I don't like that they've stopped. I want them to start again. Mm -hmm. So I am going to be watching the ones with a zero over time to see if they do. BABA, they just started paying a dividend, right? So I'm hoping that they grow their dividend. 
Uh, they paid out one in January. They just announced another one coming up here. So I'm assuming they're going to be growing their dividend, but we'll see. Uh, they are growing, but slow. Enbridge, I, I'm not expecting a, a, a real fast growth with that. I want to see some growth, but seven plus percent, I'm okay with slow growth. Uh, Kraft Heinz, we talked about. Let's see, here's another one. MPW, they recently cut their dividend, so I, I'm okay with that for now. Again, this is one if two years from now, three years from now, they're not growing their dividend, I would look to cut them out of the, out of the portfolio. I want growing dividends over time. Same thing here. OHI, I'm not as concerned with this one. Same thing. My, If you see here, my cost basis is, or my yield on cost is 9.38%. I mean, that's a high yielding with some upside as far as price appreciation. I'm up 12.5%. So I'm not going to, I probably wouldn't trim a position like this. I'm getting an 8% current dividend yield with a yield on cost of 9.3%. So that's a high, uh, high yield CD or something equivalent with some potential price appreciation. So I'm fine with no growth there because it's so high. Uh, this one, SBSW, same thing. They recently uh, stopped raising their dividend. I'd like them to re restart again. Uh, AT&T, I knew that going in. Whenever I bought AT&T, they were doing their stock split. So uh, I knew that they were going to pause the dividend. I'm hoping in the next couple of years. Union Pacific is one that I'm really disappointed in. Uh, they were doing like a 10% dividend raise whenever I bought them, you know, two and a half years ago. And then they recently stopped raising their dividend. So same thing. I'd like them to uh, to start back up. I may, if they don't here, maybe a year, year and a half from now, if they're not raising their dividend again, I might look to switch this for another position in the utility sector. Uh, so there are some zero dividend growths that I'm watching, uh, but I'm not looking to trim any of them yet. Kraft Heinz is probably the closest. I would say if by mid next year, end of next year, they are not, it may be one that finds its way out of the portfolio. Where they sit at 15% of, <clears throat> excuse me, where they sit at 15% of a 52 week low. And I use this as a high benchmark uh, of where I want my average cost per share to be. I want it to be under where it sits at 15% of its 52 week low. I mean, it could be well under, or it could be a newer position that I use this as the high point to get into. So for example, right now, American Water Works my average cost per share is 120. Even though the current share price, $128.25, is above my average cost per uh, my average share per average cost per share, I can run this up to 131. So even though it's at 128 and my cost per share is 120, I could continue to buy this so long as it didn't bring my average cost above this 131. Hopefully that made sense. Total shares 6,007. 116.704. Market value of the portfolio, $258,181.87. I have $247,308.73 into the portfolio. Total return, 10,873.14. I don't focus on this. Percent returns down a little bit from where it's been in the previous weeks, 4.4%. I don't focus on that either. I'm not at, I, I want to see uh, returns, right? I do want to see positive returns. Don't get me wrong there. Uh, current yield, 4.337%. My yield on cost, 4.527%. But this, that's why it's circled in red over here. This is what I focus on. The dividends paid out by all the positions in the portfolio. It continues to grow whether the market's up, whether the market's down, whether the market's floating sideways, whether my portfolio's up, whether my portfolio's down, or whether my portfolio's floating sideways. This is what I'm focused on. This is eventually what I'm going to eventually live on. This is what is going to eventually pay my bills and allow me to stop working. Currently sits at $11,196.37. Very, very nice to see. And I do believe by the end of July, we will be very close to $12,000 a year in dividends or $1,000 a month. And again, my portfolio for the first time did happen to jump over $1,000 a month. Uh, for the month of May. So very nice to see, very close to that 1,000 a month mark. And lastly, the dividend growth year over year is sitting at 5.81%. And that really means the positions in the portfolio on average are raising their dividends by 5.81%. The most recent was Lionel Basil here, LYB. And that's why I've highlighted them in yellow as they raise or increase their dividend uh, throughout the year. I'll highlight it in yellow. We only have a few left. Uh, that have not. We'll see. Bank of America has not. Let's see this one. HPQ has not. 
uh, unless I've missed an announcement. KHC hasn't been, so I know that. Uh, oh, we need to highlight Kroger. Nope, they haven't yet. Okay, Kroger has not. Uh, who else? And Starbucks have not. There are a couple others that have not, but they haven't been raising their dividends. So I'm not, oh, Verizon, another one. They haven't raised theirs yet. So there are still a few positions in the portfolio that have not raised their dividend. Hopefully over the next couple of months or by the end of the year, they will continue to do so. And it'd be nice if some of these that have a zero will start doing that as well. Well, that is it. That is it for the portfolio update. Let me know how your portfolio is doing. Did you receive any dividends this week? What did you buy if you bought anything? Are you running any options? Do you do week-to-week -week options or do you go out further? Let me know. Love to hear from you down below in the comment section. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them down there below as well. And as always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the Vested Interest community. I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. And again, I do a Stock Pick of the Day series Monday through Thursday. So make sure you hit that notification bell so you can tune back in for that one. And these portfolio updates will happen every Sunday morning as well as the other ones I do that I mentioned early on. Uh, if you have a company you'd like me to cover in the Stock Pick of the Day series, go ahead and drop it down in the comment section. I'll work into the rotation. And this is Shane signing off. Wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by. I really need to take a new picture. This picture is old. This is not what the yard looks like. Our pool is open now, so don't think that's what my backyard looks like right now. Uh, I'll try to get a new picture updated here. It definitely looks a little, little better than that right now with the pool open. Uh, but really appreciate you stopping by. Hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Not the presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm most sharing my opinion and investing journey, educational and entertainment purposes. Of investing involves risk. You can lose money and should never invest any amount you're not comfortable losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and selected criteria or seek the advice and counsel of a certified financial advisor.